Lyon, a city in France located in the Ouen Rhône Alpes region. Sit at the junctions of the Rhône and Sanon River, its center reflects 2000 years of history from the Roman Amphitheatre, the Turquoise, medieval periods, and Renaissance architectures in Old Lyon to the modern confluence districts on the Pesqui Peninsula, Taraboria, covered passageway between buildings connected. Old Lyons and La Croix Luce Hills. Lyon was the third biggest city in France behind Marseille and Paris. Lyon was known for becoming a significant economic hub during the Renaissance. The city is recognized for its cuisines and gastronomy, as well as historical and architectural landmarks. The districts of Old Lyon, the Pest Creek, and the slopes of Croix Luce are inscribed on UNESCO World Heritage List. Lyon was the home of Arcane Studio, a French video game studio that gave birth to many beloved video games like my favorite Disordered and Disordered 2, Prey, and Death Loops. But Lyon was infamous for a man who was a Gestapo officer who terrorized the city during the Second World War. Many people compare his atrocity to the notorious cult leader of the 1960s, Charles Manson. His name is Klaus Barbie, also known as the Butcher of Lyon. Nicolaus Klaus Barbie was born on 25th of October 1913 in Gothenburg and was later renamed Bad Gothenburg, which is today part of Bonn. The Barbie family came from Mersing in the Sars near the French border. His parents' ancestors were likely French Roman Catholics named Barbillon, who left France at the time of the French Revolution. In 1914, his family, Nicolaus, was conscripted to fight in the First World War. He returned an angry, bitter man. He was wounded in the neck at Verdun and captured by the French, whom he hated and he never recovered his health. He became an alcoholic who abused his children until 1923. When he was 10, Klaus Barbie attended the local school where his father taught. Afterward, he heard about a boarding school in Chia and was relieved to be away from his abusive father. In 1925, the entire Barbie family moved to Chia. In June of 1933, Barbie's younger brother Kurt died at the age of 18 of a coronetic illness. Later that year, their father died. His father died during the plan for the 20 years old Barbie to study theology or became an academic. As his peer had experienced while unemployed, Barbie was conscripted into the Nazi labor service. The Reicher Baitens then on the 26th of September 1935 at the age of 22. He joined the SS and began working in the SD, the SS Security Service, which acted as the intelligence gathering arm of the Nazi Party. On the 1st of May 1937, he became a member of 4,580,000. 3085 of the Nazi party. After the German conquest and occupations of Netherlands, Barbie was assigned to Amsterdam. He had been pre-assigned to Adolf Eichmann M's department IVB4. This department was responsible for the edification, roundup, and deportations of Dutch Jews and Freemasons. On 11 of October 1940, Barbie arrested Hermanus van Tonken, the Grand Masters of the Grand Ordinance of the Netherlands, in March 1941. Van Tronken was transported to Sanchenhausen. Concentration camps were in freezing conditions. He died two weeks later. On the 1st of April, Barbie submitted Van Tronken and daughter Shara to SD headquarters and informed her that her father was died of an infection in both ear and had been ceremonied in 1942. He was sent to Dijon, France, in the occupation zone. In November of the same year, at 29, he was assigned to Lyon. As the head of the local Gestapo, he established his headquarters at the Hotel Termalus in Lyon, where he tortured adults and child prisoners. He became known as the Butcher of Lyon because one of the victims was a French resistance leader who got violently tortured to death by burning with pubic hair and smashed the head to death with a sledgehammer. According to the survival, Barbie was obsessed with the torture interrogations of French Jews and French resistance members in a sadistic way. 
One of the noble victims was Chan Moulin, a member of the French Resistance who was betrayed by one of the French Resistance members that made him captured by Barbie. According to one of the former Malays members, quote, I saw Barbie torturing Chan Moulin in a savage way. Barbie waterboarded him, mutilating his penis, and then Barbie stomped Chan Moulin's head with a boot to death. If Klaus Barbie tortured a French Jewish woman or a French female resistance member, he would sexually assault them. One of his favorite methods of torture for French Jewish women or French resistance members is Chibari. Chibari was a type of bondage originating from Japan during the Sengoku period, but for Barbie version, it's worse. One of the former female French resistance whose wife Barbie's sadistic torture said, Barbie bondaged me. He blindfolded me, slapped me, and forced me to do a blowjob. After that, he pushed me to the table, he pulled my panties from my skirt, he used his penis and entered my vagina, then raped me. That was a testimony from the survival and the members of the Malays about Klaus Barbie atrocity, but his atrocities are worse and worse. René, Paulette, and Guy used to help at Isieux, used to help Madame Zlatte in Isieux. Isieux was a farmhouse where Madame Zlatte placed the children in um, there to, to keep, to hide them because their parents were taken to where concentration about, camps. Where Isieux have been? It's not far from Lyon. Uh, I can't tell you whether it's, I guess it would be north of Lyon. Um, it's about a two hour drive from Lyon. And uh, the farmhouse was on top of a hill. And um, this is where Madame Zlatin brought the children that she took from the camps. And she looked after them, the children that needed to be placed in in uh, homes such as myself because I was too weak and sick. Um, the, so she placed them. The other children stayed in Isieux. And Paulette, René, and Guy used to help there to, to feed the children, to sing to them, to play with them, to put them to bed. Paulette used to tell me that she, she used to tell the children's stories because a lot of them were petrified, they were scared, and they were, I was one of the youngest um, at Isieux. Um, but you didn't live at Isieux? Only for a short while, on and off. Whenever Paulette and René and Guy used to go to Isieux, they took me with them, they brought me with them. Um, so they, we didn't, st we didn't live there to say that we were there all the time like some of the other children. From all these children, we are 12 to have survived, who have passed through Madame Zlatin's hands and easier. On the morning of 6 of April 1944, members of the Lyon Gestapo, who and informants had tipped off, carried out a raid on the children's homes in Isuo and arrested everyone there. 44 children aged 4 to 17 and 7 staff members who had been taking care of them were incarcerated in person in Lyon and were deported to Darcy the following day. The deportation order was issued by Klaus Barbie, head of the Gestapo in Lyon. Barbie reported that the arrest of the children and adults at the children's home in the telegram that he sent to Paris during the children's detentions in Lyon, the Germans discovered the whereabouts of some of their family members were taken to Darnsey and later departed to their death in Auschwitz Birkenau death camps. During the raid on Isu, Rilon Leifman, a medical student who cared for the sick children, managed to escape and hide on a nearby farm. His sister, Dr. Salam Rawan Reifman, the children's home doctor, his parents Ewa and Moses Mose, and his nephew Claude Lawan Reifman lived in the home. They were all murdered at Auschwitz Birkenau death camps. Miron Salin, Sabine Salin's husband, who ran the children's house with her, was departed on the 15th of May together with two of the older boys from the children's homes to Estonia, where they were all shot to death. Support some children have fled it for free. Barbie would grab the legs of the children and smash them into the wall. 
pretty pure evil and brutality killing methods. After the atrocities in Israel, he rejoined the SIPO SD in Oblion in the retreated to Berre, where he led an anti partisan attack in Riopo in September of 1944. After the Allies liberated France in 1945, Barbie went into hiding and avoided the captures and lynchings by the French resistance. In 1947, Barbie was recruited as an agent for the 66th Detachment of the US Army Counterintelligence Corps or CIC along with the Serbian agents of the Belgrade Special Police and SD Radisab Grodwick. The US used Barbie and other Nazi party members to further European anti-communist efforts, Spectrile. They were interested in British interrogation technique, which Barbie had experienced firsthand, and the identities of former SS officers, British intelligence agencies, might be interested in recruiting. Later, the CIC housed him in a hotel in Memmingen. He reported on French intelligence activity in the French zones of the occupied Germany because they expected that the KGB agent had infiltrated the French GPU. The French discovered that Blobby was in US hands and sentenced him to death in absentia for his war crimes that he committed. They made a plea to John J. McCloy, US High Commissioner for Germany, to hand him over for execution, but McCloy allegedly refused. In 1949, the Americans used red light to smuggle Bobby and his family to South America. The first location where he and his family arrived was Argentina in 1951. The Israeli Mossad agents began investigating Klaus Barbie and his war crimes in Lyon back during the Second World War and identified where Klaus Barbie lived, but it failed. However, he moved to Bolivia where he changed his last name from Barbie to Altman and he lived in Cochabamba working for the Bolivian Juntas against the common insurgency. Nevertheless, Barbie became rich in Bolivia after he sold weapons to the Communist Party of Malay to fight against the British Empire during the Malay Emergency and the Biafra militia groups during the Nigerian Civil War. However, in 1971, he was identified by a Nazi hunter couple, Serge and Bethes Karsfeld. Serge Karfeld was a French Jewish lawyer who lost his father during the German occupation of France, while Peter Karsfeld was a German bond left wing actress. She opposed racism and anti Semitism and was opposed to the America's role in Vietnam War and the French role in Algerian War. We will not cover Serge and Peter Karsfeld's story, but I will mention them in the another part of the video. If you want to know about them, I will recommend you to watch some documentaries on YouTube. In 1972, a French journalist interviewed him in prison. While interviewed, he denied his atrocities during the Second World War in Lyon and said that he was not Klaus Barbie but Klaus Altmann. The Bolivian juntas refused to extradite him to France for his war crimes. Eventually, Barbie began to enter the world of the narcotics. He began working for Roberto Suarez Gomez, who eventually introduced him to the Colombian trafficker. Barbie met with Pablo Escobar and several other high ranking members of the Medellin cartel in the late 1970s and agreed to arrange for the security of Escobar's raw coca supply from the cultural relations until it reached processing plant in Colombia. In exchange, Escobar decided to fund Barbie's anti communist activity. We made a video about Pablo Escobar on the History of the Narcos episode 2. Check it out on my main channel. Barbie began having a connection with the Bolivian Juntas and the Colombian cartel. Eventually, he had connected with a famous or infamous German born politician, Henry Kissinger. Kissinger was a German born politician whose parents fled to the United States after Nazi Germany took over the country. Growing up into an Americanized German home as a Jewish, Kissinger was known for withdrawing the American troops from Vietnam and supporting General Augusto Pinochet to wage a coup against the Allende's government in 1973. 
However, Kissinger helped Barbie for hunting a communist in Bolivia. In reality, Kissinger was Jewish. Barbie was a former Nazi. If Barbie knows that Kissinger is Jewish, Barbie will execute him. In 1983, the newly elected democratic government of Hernán Celes Sauso arrested Barbie in La Paz on the pretext of his owning his government $10,000 for good he had supposed to have delivered but did not. A few days later, the government delivered him to France to stand trial. Shortly after a Barbie extradition, if evidence emerged that Barbie had worked for the US intelligence in Germany and that US agents may have been instrumental in Barbie's flight to Bolivia to escape prosecution in France. Alan Ryan, director of the Office of Special Investigations of the US Justice Department, recommended to US Attorney General William French Smith that the matter be investigated. After the investigations of Barbie atrocities, the tribunal against Barbie began on 11 of May 1987. During the trial, he was no remorse for his atrocities back when he was a Gestapo in Lyon during the Second World War. Barbie was convicted for war crimes, acts of genocide, and crimes against humanity, and is a member of an illegal organization, the Gestapo. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Klaus Barbie died from leukemia and spite and prostate cancer in 1991 at the age of 77. Six years later, Marcus Papon, Barbie's right hand man, was arrested. He was convicted for his war crimes, genocides, and crimes against humanity. However, Papon was a man who was behind the massacres of the anti war protester in Paris back in 1961, but he created that incident back in 61. Bethes Carfield receives the Legion of Honor and Serge Carfield receives the Legion of Honor from President François Hollande. Today, the couple fought against racism, sexism, and anti-Semitism in France. Now let's analyze his mind. The case of Klaus Barbie was an example of how Americans used him as a puppet to fight against a pro-communist, anti-Western militant movement in Bolivia. Unlike the fictional characters of Tony Sopranos or Raul Menendez, Klaus Barbie was not a tragic villain, but he was a pure evil man who was no remorse for his atrocities and was a narcissistic, sociopathic man who had a twisted mind. Entirely to be that Blabby was made to be evil due to his father fought during the First World War and abused him as a child. And Germany during the time was filled with hatred of Jews and undesirables and he said that he was 100% Nazis until he died. Barbie was a sadistic sociopath and a psychopathic too. He was a psychopathic villain in the Second World War. There was a two psychopathic villains that were worse than Hitler or Stalin. One is a German Gestapo, Klaus Barbie. And a two is a former Japanese dictator, Hideki Tocho. Both were pure evil, sadistic, psychopathic, and no remorse for their war crimes. They committed and saw that genocide was a game. As a result, war is hell. Even the Second World War was reasonably an example that made many people be evil. But after the end of the Second World War, the Cold War was began, making the United States start to intervene in the Third World country. For example, look at in Vietnam, look at in Chile, look at how Americans intervened in these Central American countries. Look at in Nicaragua, for example, America support contrast that lead to the scandals. These were quite to be that America's role in the Cold War was worse. And after the Cold War end, this country suffered from poverty, drugs and crime. And that is the video folks. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to the Heart of Darkness. And if some part were inaccurate, I will apologize about that, and thank you for watching.